Hello everybody. So this is the first uh, chapter of a very, very, very long uh, tutorial on how to make a uh, full uh, next gen or slash current gen uh, character for video games. So this is going to be uh, a process that includes a bunch of different, uh, bunch of different softwares. And uh, we are going to start right away in ZBrush. So the way this is going to go, we're going to start in ZBrush and then we're going to uh, uh, basically do everything in ZBrush, do the entire high poly in ZBrush and then uh, retopologize all that stuff using TopoGun. Uh, you could use ZBrush itself. ZBrush has uh, some retopology tools, uh, but I like to do it in TopoGun because it's a little bit, uh, it's just a little bit simpler in my opinion. Uh, and then after that, we're going to do, uh, of course, the UVs and we are going to finalize the uh, the materials and the textures inside uh, Photoshop and then uh, Substance Painter. So those are kind of like the main tools that we're going to use. I chose to use those tools because those are the uh, pretty much, you know, the mainstream tools that the uh, the, the game industry the video game industry uses so I want to uh, yeah I wanted to uh, basically prepare you guys for uh, what's what's out there if you don't have a you know if, if your goal is to eventually get a job in the game industry or if you have already a job and you want to uh, kind of like see the pipeline of a like a triple a AAA, uh, production so that's pretty much what this is so uh, as you can see here I start in ZBrush with uh, just a sphere so uh, in my previous tutorial, I started from a base mesh because that's normally what you do in the, uh, you know, when you're working on a big production on a big game. Uh, you're not going to start from scratch like this. There's a, there is most likely going to be a, an existing mesh somewhere that you can start from. Uh, and as a matter of fact, there are a bunch of existing meshes in, uh, photo, in uh, ZBrush itself. So you could you could start from something in there already instead of starting from scratch. Um, if it's uh, you know if it's for practice, sure you know why not start from scratch. But most of the time, the logic is that uh, you know as a, unless you're senior, you're not going to work on uh, this kind of stuff. You're not going to work on the the base mesh because it has to be uh, very well made so that it's uh, good for the engine. It deforms well and all those things. So generally speaking, you know it's a a task reserved for seniors, but uh, yeah, if you want to practice, um, this is the way to do it. So what I uh, what I well I'll just do you know instead because I have my own base meshes that I could totally use and it would save me a lot of time. But uh, some some of you guys wanted to see this kind of process. So basically, the way I create the base mesh itself. Uh, since my last uh, my last tutorial for the hand painted character, uh, that I also recommend if you haven't checked it out. Uh, but uh, in that particular. Uh, tutorial I already started from a base mesh and all I did was add on like the the gears and customize the base mesh basically so uh, that did save me a lot of time so in this case we're gonna spend some some extra time kind of uh, creating that base mesh but I think it should be a pretty interesting process if you've never if you if you've never seen how it is and I'm gonna show you guys also after that how to create a very good topology for the face especially because the face is the most important um, in the most cases and uh, and the most uh, easy to mess up. So right now, as you can see, I have a, a very nice alien, uh, a very good looking alien. Uh, so it always starts like this. So I know some guys start and like everything looks really, really nice. For me, like it starts like, like a bunch of crap for like the first couple minutes and then it starts to work somehow. So like while I'm looking at this, I'm just, you know, blurring my eyes, I'm squinting a lot. Uh, trying just to get the overall shape. So all the details are just, I really don't care at this point. I'm just trying to get the, the human proportions right and kind of like deforming, uh, deforming the clay too to make that work. So as far as the tools that I'm using, pretty simple. Uh, the tools I'll be using for, for ZBrush, um, you know, when I sculpt things like this, I use uh, the clay tubes. And I will also use the move tool quite extensively. To uh, to move things around, and then I'll have the, uh, the you know the normal tool, the standard standard brush, and I'll use like a, a pointy alpha for it to create kind of like the creases around the nose and you know, like the the line under the eyes and that kind of stuff. So uh, yeah, and then uh, some uh, dynamic trim, trim dynamic, and then some flatten, and that's pretty much the only tools that I use. 
and then of course you know I inserted the two spheres in my mesh with the insert sphere um, tool to be able to have some eyeballs to kind of like work around yeah so basically I'm just gonna go and uh, try to get like the main uh, planes of the face so you know jawline uh, kind of like the skull having the nose so everything a little bit too perfect and after that, we'll, uh, we'll make that a little bit more organic. So I did, uh, well, as you can see, it's, it is fast forwarded quite a bit. Uh, not quite a bit, actually. It's fast forwarded just uh, two times. So it's as if I'm uh, going at double speed. So the entire process, I think, for the uh, the high poly took about uh, about seven, sixteen hours, something like that. So this uh, this whole process is going to take eight. So bear with me; <laughs> it's going to be a long ride. I'm not going to be talking the whole time, obviously, because some things just get too repetitive. Like especially when I start to do uh, to do the details and that kind of stuff. Uh, there's really no point in me talking over it. So uh, I'll just let uh, like the music play. But. Uh, yeah, so uh, the uh, the whole the whole point of this uh, of this tutorial was to show kind of like the uh, the process of a you know a triple A studio uh, when it comes to uh, creating characters, and uh, so this particular character uh, it just fits my style a little bit more, so it's going to be stylized. Uh, it's not going to be one hundred percent realistic. Um, and by that, what by what I mean, Salas is uh, you know the face is not going to be uh, you know super super accurate. So the the anatomy, the the uh, like pretty much everything is going to be just a little bit tweaked, a little bit like fantasized, and uh, that's fine. But the same process applies if you were to do something a little bit more realistic, for example. So especially uh, you know in here. Uh, I, I go with like very very clean edges, clean surfaces. But if you were to you know if you were drawing like a, not drawing, but if you were modeling an old an old person or something like that, you know go ahead and add all those folds in and whatever. So this is really like a, I'm building a character with this, but this could totally work for any kind of style. Uh, it can also work for uh, you know creatures and that kind of stuff. So the only the only thing is uh, with my particular style, I don't need I don't need the uh, you know fancy tools or anything like that. Fancy. Uh, ZBrush tricks. Uh, it's very, very straightforward. So it's, uh, it's a little bit closer to uh, just modeling with regular clay, which is why I like it. But the, uh, you know, if you were to do something a little bit more realistic, with like pores and that kind of stuff, you might want to have like, uh, you know, uh, alphas with uh, with uh, pores for your, for your skin and like wrinkles, wrinkle maps, and add a lot of uh, a lot a lot more details in there. Uh, my final mesh is not going to be that heavy. So uh, that's another plus of having like a, a more stylized look. But yeah, just just know that uh, you know this process works for everything basically. Some of the characters are starting to look a little bit uh, less alien. Still kind of funny looking, but uh, it's getting there. Uh, it's important when you're working on the face to uncheck or to actually trigger uh, perspective mode because otherwise it gets really really uh, warped and it looks actually pretty pretty strange without so uh, that's what happened there I had to, I had to turn it turned off by default and uh, when I turned it on it's like oh crap it looks kind of weird so now I'm making the proper adjustments with perspective turned on and uh, as you can see for the face this is uh, well normally I'll just use a face that is already existing to save me the time of doing this but uh, yeah, that's pretty much the process. So I'll start with like just the main land landmarks on the on the face, of so the eyes, the nose, and kind of like where the mouth is going to go, and of course the shape, the silhouette of the face, of uh, the the head. And then uh, yeah, you work really really rough, as rough as you can for the longest time. And then uh, once you're ready, once the shape is there, uh, you can go ahead and uh, start to adding adding the details. So it's always the same thing. I just add details, I paint, I paint, I paint, and then I I soften everything to hide the the brush strokes. So, yeah, the what I want to have here, what I want to focus on is like very clean surfaces. So, right now it's definitely not clean, and that's uh, you know that's it happens whenever you work with uh, clay tubes. 
it just creates a bunch of a uh, bunch of brush strokes. So if you're if I were to do uh, like a realistic character, maybe with a bunch of wrinkles, maybe that'd be good. But in my case, I want to, to make sure that I soften this out, you know, as I go. Otherwise, it gets a little bit out of control. And I always rotate around the head a lot to make sure that I look at it from a bunch of different angles because it's really easy to get used to a particular angle and then you rotate it and then it's all wrong. Um, and of course, you know, I'm not using any reference in this case, but uh, definitely, you know, use reference. Like the best way to model a face, I think, is uh, especially if not, if not, if you're not super used to it, that's not something you do all the time, is uh, open up like Google and just like copy the face of somebody and then copy it to a degree where it starts to resemble the person and then, you know, kind of like a, uh, open up another picture and then copy uh, start copying those features instead and then do that for a couple times so it doesn't actually look like somebody uh, so you know they're not going to complain about it or anything but kind of make it like a a medley of a bunch of different like, faces different faces all in one and this way you can uh, yeah you can have like something very very accurate realistic and uh, while using references and using references always the best way to work and always the best way to learn. So uh, just like I did for the neck here, I'm gonna do a mask. So a quick mask and then uh, I'm gonna move, invert the selection first and then uh, move uh, move that selection out. So for the neck, that's what I did. I, and then I'm gonna do the same thing here, invert and I select a, a big move brush and then I you know, pull those ears out a little bit. So when you do that, you know you get a bunch of like really nasty uh, edges at the back here, where you where it's really stretched out. So it's always important after you do a big move like this, or a big deformation on your mesh, whatever it is, uh, to uh, do a uh, dy dynamic. To uh, yeah, to adjust. To adjust your mesh basically to adjust your mesh density so that you can add uh, continue adding more details so that's what i did here as soon as i you know get rid of the uh the mask i did a dynamesh and now i can add uh you know i can start digging under the ears uh, behind the ears like this and add uh, the final details So at this point, you know, I'm using Dynamesh pretty at a pretty low value. So I think it's i uh, I'm not sure. I've never really understood the logic, and uh, and I never bothered to look into it, uh, what the number actually means when you when you Dynamesh. But um, in my case here, I think the Dynamesh was at like 200 something like that, 300 maybe. Uh, basically, when I work for when I work on a face, uh, and I want this to be pretty quick, and I don't want to have to to soften too much and like. Uh, basically like a, a good a good number of polygons to work with a uh, good number of verts to work to work with is about what i have right now so maybe around the 200 uh, k region area ballpark <laughs> so yeah now I'm just uh using a standard brush with as you can see like a, a pointy alpha and that's uh that that alpha i think is alpha i don't remember the name 49 maybe Re whatever it looks it's really good to do folds with this so I'm going to be doing a lot of folds uh, with this particular alpha and then you also use a dam standard to to get like uh, like cavities like uh, really good for uh, uh, to contour things or to add like a bunch of details and crevices into your mesh so yeah I'm just using that in negative mode to dig to dig the details into the ears uh, it's pretty easy to do when you know kind of like uh, the base shapes so yeah I'm just digging into the shape I'll pull those out and then I'm digging back in to add all those details until it looks until it looks good So I'm gonna start. So I always start with the head because it's just uh, it just makes more sense. And then from there, uh, the plan that I have is that I'll extrude 
uh, the rest of the body from that. So I'll, you know, again, select the neck and kind of pull that down, create the torso and then create the arms and the legs. Um, so yeah, it's not the cleanest way to do it. Uh, you could definitely use uh, the tools that ZBrush has like a the Z spheres and then you know create kind of like a skeleton using that and then transform that into a mesh but I just like to pull things out uh, it's I don't know it feels more direct just a personal preference I guess but yeah there's many ways to do this just pick your favorite so when you model a head like this uh, you want to you want to try to make it as uh, expression neutral as possible so you don't want to have like a grin or make it look too angry or anything like that because uh, in the case of a video game which is kind of what this is all about uh, you know it's going to be uh, skin it's going to be rigged and this is something that they'll have to get rid of because the animators really really hate it when you have uh, like an emotion already kind of like modeled in into the characters because they can't uh, when when they're about to do that uh, opposite emotion then they have to put extra work and it's pretty annoying so uh, always try to make them as expressionless as possible.